Hello Pelican Sound. Once again, I'm your head golf professional, Tim Harris. I'm here today to talk to you about a number of subjects. Uh, you know, throughout the course of the season, I get a lot of comments, questions, concerns, complaints, praises. Uh, they come in all kinds of forms, emails, or just having you all come in and talk to me. So I thought what I'd do for this video is kind of take a few select ones that I've gotten and kind of go over some of those topics with you. Um, some of them are common sense, other things are things that people just don't really realize or know about, whether it's the rules or things with the blue discs or just general care of the golf course. So uh, I'll take a few minutes of your time and we'll go over a few things. So I'll call it like Tim's uh, email bag. And I've got some uh, selected ones that I have here that we'll go over. So the first question I've got is not really a question, maybe it was more of a comment, but um, it's from someone who said that they live on Lakes 3 near the green and they see handicapped drivers always ignoring the blue discs, you know, and I've gone over that several times in certain videos and they're asking me, is there something that can be done to stop the handicapped drivers from doing that? Well, I don't want to feel like it's a broken record, but I think it would be better if we go out to Lakes number three right now and I can show you exactly what we're talking about. So let's head over to Lakes three. Okay, so we're out here on Lakes hole number three. Um, and as you can see, as the camera pans around here, the greens complex and the surrounding areas can be pretty tricky when it comes to navigating a golf cart. So for all of our fellow members who have the handicap flag, there have always been some questions and some um, concerns about where they're allowed to take their cart. And we have received many uh, comments from members um, saying that they've been abusing um, the routes and not following the proper procedures. So one thing I wanna make clear about this uh, area is that there are two blue discs on this hole. One of them is right over here to my left, as you can see, which is to the left of the green. So we have a blue disc here, which as you know, handicapped carts are supposed to park to the outside of the blue disc. So we're about 30 feet from the green here. Um, you can see over here where the two bunkers are, there's a large hill and that hill could be dangerous to have a cart go over. So our maintenance crew has actually roped off that area between the bunkers and also over there by the green. And that's the one area where we've been getting a lot of um, folks telling us that golf carts are traveling between the green and that bunker. And believe it or not, a few times over here to the right, we've had carts go between the lake and the green. Now, obviously those are areas that we don't want golf carts going into. Um, and here on the approach, we don't want carts parking here either. So the other blue disc is on the back of the green. So what I'll tell you is this, if the flag is in the front, or if your ball's in the front, park at the front blue disc here to the left. You can drive to the left of the bunkers and around to get to the back. And if your ball is in the back, or if you wanna park in the back, there's another blue disc back there. Here's what I'm gonna say really clearly to all of our handicapped drivers. Do not park your golf cart on the approach. Not only on this hole, but any hole, okay? If you park on the approach, that's the area where a lot of people chip and putt it's gonna wear down a lot easier. A lot of our handicap uh, flag drivers have been parking on the approaches. Please stick to the blue discs, they're off to the side. Always look for the blue discs. You received the booklet, you got it from me personally, I talked to you about it. Follow the rules, okay? I'm getting comments, I'm getting questions, I'm getting concerns, I'm getting photos from people taking pictures out of their lanai's, groups that are behind people. I shouldn't have to be receiving those because, and I'm gonna say this throughout the video, it's not that difficult to follow the rules and to park to the outsides of the blue discs, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go on to another question here. This is from somebody who uh, had a question about rules. Is on river hole number one. I played river hole number one and I hit my ball to the right. There's a red line that goes all the way up the car path. Uh, I was standing on the car path, but my ball was to the right of the red line. Do I get a free drop? So let's go out there to river number one. And let's see if we get a free drop or not. So here we are out here on river hole number one. And this is the situation that uh, the emailer was talking about. There is a red line that runs all the way up the right side of the concrete car path. It's getting a little faded, so we might have to touch that up, but you can see clearly here where the red line is that uh, signifies where the penalty area is. Now, I played this hole and I hit a shot over here to the right, but my ball is actually to the right of the red line. And if I stand on the car path, I can go ahead and hit that one, but sometimes, you know, you might feel like your club's going to get damaged because on the follow through, it might hit the cart path. Well, normally, if it wasn't a penalty area, you could take a drop and get free relief, but because the ball is actually laying in the penalty area, 
you have to take a penalty if you want to take relief here. So I could be standing on the cart path, but because the ball is inside the penalty area, I have to take the penalty. I could go ahead and try and hit it, or if I want to take the one stroke penalty, I pick my ball up, I determine that it crossed right here. I can go two club links out this way. If the two club links take me to the cart path, then I can get over here to the other side of the cart path and I can drop within one club length and go ahead and play from there. But if this was my tee shot, now I'm hitting three from here, okay? So always remember, if your ball is in the penalty area, you cannot get relief if you're standing on the cart path. You have to take the penalty and come over here to the other side. So I hope that helps. Now, there was another question that we had moving on. Um, the viewer or the viewer or the emailer actually said that uh, I was playing golf today and the people in front of us kept leaving sand footprints on the green. It's never see been this bad. I've never seen it this bad. Is there any way you can talk to people about proper etiquette when they're playing out of a bunker? So let's kind of look to the uh, green up here and let's play a shot from the bunker and see what we can do there. All right, so we're up here on the green. I'm about to play a sand shot from the sand bunker here onto the green. So as most of you do when you're about to hit a sand shot, you do a lot of this, you kind of dig in and get your feet a little bit low. Then you go ahead and hit your shot. So let's say I'm playing this shot and I go in, I dig in, now I'm gonna go hit it. Okay, I get it out there. Now, the proper thing to do once you hit this shot is to come out, go ahead and rake, okay? Now, some of you may still be standing in the bunker as you're raking and bringing it back to you. Now, let's say I rake everything up and I come up here and then I'm done and I just walk up to the green and I make my putt. Well, what's going to happen is that there's going to be sand on the bottom of my shoes because I've been standing in the bunker and I'm going to leave that, those footprints all over the green. So what's the proper thing to do? Well, after you rake, go ahead and lean your uh, foot over the bunker. Use your club to tap the sand off the bottom of your shoe. There still may be some sand on there, but at least it's not gonna be caked on the bottom of your shoe like it would be if you didn't tap it off. So look, I said this once before, it's not that difficult. It's not that difficult to just tap your shoes, get the sand off of it. That way you don't leave footprints on the green for the people who are playing behind you, okay? So let's move on to the next topic. Now this one I thought, you know, you see it quite a bit people smoke okay sometimes there's cigarette butts that are left out there so one person said I was on the driving range and was disgusted at the cigarette butts I saw on the ground some people think the world is their ashtray once again these are actual emails I'm not making this stuff up okay can you please remind everyone to dispose of their cigarette butts properly well I'll tell you what let's go over to the driving range right now and let's see if we can find some cigarette butts and uh, we'll talk a little bit about that let's head over So we're out here on the driving range, and as you just saw, yeah, there's a couple of cigarette butts laying on the ground. So look, it's really simple, and I shouldn't really have to say it, but if you are going to smoke when you're up here on the driving range, on the golf course, wherever you are, just don't flick your cigarette butt out and leave it here. It doesn't look good. It's not appealing. Go ahead and dispose of your cigarette butts properly, whether you extinguish them in the, maybe the sand bucket and then throw it in the trash, however you want to do it. But it's not that difficult again i'll go ahead and say it to just dispose of your cigarette butts cigar butts any trash for that matter um, instead of leaving it here on the ground so we want to keep the course in great shape we want to keep the driving range in great shape that includes how it looks you know with the appeal of aesthetically so um, cigarette butts that are left on the ground don't look good so we're just saying please do your best to dispose of your cigarette butts cigar butts properly now that kind of transitions right into our next email that I got saying hey the course is in such beautiful shape and it really is for all the amount of traffic that we're getting so Johnny and crew thank you for all, the, all that you do uh, but it's a shame when I see so many unfilled divots pitch marks on the greens are you planning on having another divot party soon so some of you may remember that we've had divot parties in the past um, now that we're in uh, pandemic mode here COVID-19 we haven't scheduled any um, but I think it's really important to just kind of reach out again and say it's, you know, it's our responsibility as members and as golfers to keep the course in great shape. So 
I'm going to take a little ride over here real quick and show you how to fill some divots and how to repair ball marks properly. So I'm out here on the golf course. I just took a shot uh, into the green and as you can see I took a divot. And when you look around you can see other divots that have been filled properly which is good. Um, but what I'm going to talk about is how to fill that divot properly. It's uh, again all of our responsibility once you take a divot on the golf course. Use the sand that's on your golf cart. There's a sand bucket here. I'm going to take a scoop of sand. I'm going to fill the divot that I made. And I'm going to smooth it over. You can use your foot. Tap it down. But, you know, we're going into March now. Busiest time of our season. We're going to have more rounds now than at any point during the rest of the year. So there's going to be a lot of divots here. It's your responsibility to fill them. Bermuda grass grows horizontally. So when you put the sand in, you try to smooth it down to the level of the surface. Tap it down with your foot. And there you go. There's a nice filled divot. Now the grass can grow back properly. If you don't fill your divots in, you can get depressions in the fairway. And that doesn't do anybody any good because if your ball lands in a depression, you got to play it. So we want to fill them in properly. Do your best. We're going to go up to the green right now. I'm going to show you how to fix pitch marks when your ball lands on the green. All right, so I hit my shot from before, fixed my divot, filled it in with sand. And now when my ball hit the green, it left a little depression that you can see right here. So fixing your depressions in the green with a divot tool, very important. Um, if, if you don't fix it properly, it could leave ugly scars on the green. So this is how you do it. Everyone has a divot tool with a prong on it. When you go in here, you want to enter it in diagonally from the side. And then we want to push the grass towards the middle. As you can see, I'm doing right here. So I get around all sides and I go in and I push all the grass towards the middle of the divot or the ball mark. And then I don't have my putter here with me, but you would tap it down. You can use your feet. Just tap it down and that smooths out the surface. But it's repaired properly because if you come in from the uh, 45 degree angle and push the turf towards the center, it doesn't tear the roots of the grass. If you go in and you go down and you let the prongs go up towards the to top of the surface, you could tear the roots and then that would leave an ugly brown scar on the green. So the rule of thumb is always look around. If you see one that's not fixed, go ahead and fix it and also fix your own, okay? And I'll say it again, it's not that difficult to fill in your divots and fix your pitch marks when you're on the green. So if everybody does it, of course, we'll stay in great shape, okay? So we're almost done here. I've got another one. Um, this one we don't really have to go anywhere to talk about. I'm just gonna talk about it with you. Um, someone said, hey, this single cart riding is great. It's definitely helped with the pace of play. But today, unfortunately, I was behind a group where two of the players were not playing ready golf and all of them took more than one practice swing when they were out there. So they were playing really slow even though they were all in single carts. Maybe you should mention that in your next video, it says. Okay, I'm gonna mention it right now. So. You know, with the single cart riding during the pandemic, it has been better. People have been playing faster. And the reason is because now you can go directly to your golf ball. Whereas in the past, if you were sharing a golf cart, you would go to your partner's ball. You probably have to wait before you go to your next ball. So maybe this is food for thought. When we do get back to some kind of normalcy, and then we're getting back to where there's two carts in every group instead of single cart riding, kind of use that mentality when you're out there. You know, if you're driving the cart, drop your partner off at his ball and then go to your shot. And while he's playing his shot, you can get ready to play your shot or vice versa. Maybe your shot is when you have to go to first, your partner can then take the cart and drive over to his shot. So instead of just one person watching the other person hit and then having to drive over to their ball and watch the other person hit, it'll help speed things up. As far as the practice swings go, I've always been a firm believer that one practice swing is enough. You know, you don't need to have four or five practice swings when you're out there. So sometimes you don't even have to have any practice swings, but anything we can do to help the pace of play, we're gonna do. So it's the little things, <clears throat> excuse me, not taking four or five practice swings when you're out there, making sure that you drive your partner to their golf cart when we are back to sharing carts. Um, parking up to the, to the green pin high so you don't have to walk all the way back and then let the group behind you have to delay in hitting their next shot. So pace of play is important. Yes, it has been better. But eventually this is gonna go away. You know, people are getting their vaccinations now. That's awesome. We wanna get back to some kind of normalcy. So always remember pace to play, keep it in the back of your mind. Now, the last thing we're gonna talk about here before we wrap things up 
is at Tracy in the Pro Shop is doing a great job. We're actually going to have an outdoor pro shop coming up uh, in the month of March. There's select dates. Check your wave. I say it a lot of times. Check the wave because that's where all the information is. Check the Facebook page, Pro Shop. Pelican Sound Golf Shop has a Facebook page. If you're a Facebook user, go ahead and like us. So during the month of March, we're going to have select days where we're bringing the Pro Shop outside. Right outside the door there. Um, we're going to have not only apparel, we're going to have equipment out there. We're going to have shoes we're gonna have accessories so you know come see us out there gonna have a sale maybe so I'm gonna say it if you say it's not that difficult maybe you'll get a discount all right just saying um, so look at the wave you're gonna see the dates there for the uh, outdoor pro shop uh, it's, it's kind of like a preview it's not really a sale but it's a preview where we're gonna put out some of the new things that we have throughout the month of March so around in the corner we're almost here. We're at the midway point of season. I want to thank everyone for taking the time watching to the end of the video. And just remember, it's not that difficult. All the things I talked about are things that are not that difficult to do. But if we all do them, we're going to have a much better experience out here at Pelican Sound. So thanks again, everyone. We'll see you down the road.